Mennonite Heritage Village at Home for Kids. I'm your host, Hannah Friesen, and today I'm on the deck of the windmill here at the village. This windmill is a replica that was built a very long time ago. Can you guess what, it's, what, what it was built for? Stay tuned to the end of the video to find out. Today on the show, Nita is telling us a fun story, and I'll be showing you a fun spring craft. Stay tuned. Hi, everybody. It's Nita from the museum, and I'm here to read another story for you. It's a brand new book that we just got into the museum last week, and uh, we hope you enjoy it. It's by Sarah Neufeld. It's called The Grand Adventures of Pretty Kitty, A Lesson on Love. This is Pretty Kitty and she loves adventures. Today is a big day. Pretty Kitty and her family are moving to their new house. Pretty Kitty is helping unpack boxes in her new bedroom. She is feeling incredibly sad about this adventure. Pretty Kitty remembers playing with her friends in her big backyard. She misses that old house. Aw, what's wrong, sweetie? asks Mommy Kitty. I want to love our new house, but I miss our old home so much, sobs Pretty Kitty. Why did we have to move here? Daddy Kitty walks in and kisses Pretty Kitty on the head. I see that my little princess is upset. Why are you so sad, he asks. I am never going to love this house. I miss my old room, sniffles Pretty Kitty. Love is a choice, Pretty Kitty, says Daddy Kitty. You do not have to let your feelings decide for you. God can help you. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. Well, let's pray about it together, says Mommy Kitty as she gently rubs Pretty Kitty's cheek. Great idea, says Daddy Kitty. Mommy and Daddy Kitty gather round Pretty Kitty's bed and they close their eyes to pray together. Dear Jesus, I want to love our new house and be thankful, but I'm having such a hard time. Please help me to learn how to love our new home. Amen, says Pretty Kitty. But Pretty Kitty has a grumpy face and quickly whispers, I don't think that prayer is going to change anything. Mommy Kitty kisses Pretty Kitty on the head and gently tucks her in. Sometimes in life, we have to make choices that feel difficult and are hard at the time. You are going to have to choose to love our new home. Hmm. Pretty Kitty scowls and turns onto her side, trying to hide the tears sliding on down her cheek. Well, Good night, we love you. We'll see you in the morning, says Mummy Kitty and Daddy Kitty as they walk out. Pretty Kitty stares at her new room. She can't sleep. She hops out of bed, slides on her favorite fluffy slippers and turns her lamp on. She wipes her tears and decides to unpack some of her clothes into her new closet. Pretty Kitty is hanging up her clothes. She pulls out a beautiful, sparkly pink dress that she received for her last birthday. She decides to put it on over her pajamas. Pretty Kitty smiles. She feels like a princess. Just as Pretty Kitty is about to hang up another dress, she hears singing coming from the other side of the wall. That's very strange, says Pretty Kitty. Whoever could that be? As she slides her dresses out of the way, Pretty Kitty hears more music. 
She presses her ear to the wall and she sees a light shining down by her toes. This is when she notices a beautiful secret door in her closet wall. Pretty Kitty pulls on the door handle and to her surprise, it opens and the, fills the room with light. The music is beautiful and even louder. It sounds like a little kitty singing. Now Pretty Kitty is so curious. She decides to walk through the fancy little door. As Pretty Kitty walks out the other side, she realizes she doesn't recognize the place. Where am I? She says. She looks down and sees that she is still wearing her sparkly pink dress. The air feels cold and Pretty Kitty shivers a little bit. I'm so happy I have my pretty slippers to keep my feet warm, she says. Just then, Pretty Kitty sees the little girl kitty who was singing. The little kitty has an incredibly old tattered dress and she looks younger than Pretty Kitty. The little girl kitty is standing in the doorway of a small shack with a broken door. Her feet are bare, but she is smiling. I heard you singing. You have a beautiful voice, says Pretty Kitty. You sound so happy. What's your name? My name is Little Kitty. She says, I am happy. Today is my brother. Today is my birthday. And my brother brought home a whole loaf of bread that a kind stranger gave to him. Can you imagine? A whole loaf of bread just for us? What a birthday, beams little kitty. Pretty kitty feels a tug inside her heart. Here she has been complaining about moving to a beautiful new house when little kitty lives in an old shack with no shoes and is joyful about having bread to eat. She remembers a verse from church that says, share your food with the hungry and give shelter to the homeless. Give clothes to those who need them. Pretty Kitty knows the right thing to do. She is to serve one another in love, especially little Kitty who has so little. Pretty Kitty takes off her fluffy slippers and her beautiful birthday dress and hands them to little Kitty. Here, these are for you. I want to make your birthday extra special this year. She gently gives her beautiful dress and fluffy slippers to little Kitty. I want you to feel extra loved on your birthday. Little Kitty beams with joy and she happily takes the gifts. As she is hugging her new dress and slippers, little Kitty holds out her paw to pretty Kitty. I want to give you something too. I want you to have my sparkly rock, she says. Pretty Kitty feels a tear slide down her cheek, but this is not a sad tear, this is a happy tear, she realizes as she takes the little rock. Little Kitty has so little, and yet she wants to share her rock. Pretty Kitty feels love and gratitude fill her heart. Thank you so much, Pretty Kitty realizes she does not know what time it is and waves goodbye. The next morning, Pretty Kitty wakes up in her soft bed as the sun is shining in her new room. What a strange dream, she yawns. It felt so real. Pretty Kitty looks around her room searching for her birthday dress and fluffy slippers. She sees her dress hanging up in the closet with her slippers sitting neatly beneath it. Pretty Kitty realizes that she does have to choose to love her new house. She is so thankful for her beautiful house, her pretty room and all her clothes. God did answer my prayer last night, exclaims Pretty Kitty as her mom comes into her room. Pretty Kitty throws her arms around Mummy Kitty and gives her a big hug. I do love our new house 
and I love you too, Mommy. Just then, Mummy Kitty no notices a small, sparkly rock on Pretty Kitty's pillow. She asks, what is this? Pretty Kitty remembers the sparkly rock and beams. This little sparkly rock is my reminder to show love to others and to be thankful for what I have, says Pretty Kitty with a twinkle in her eye. Together, they walk out of Pretty Kitty's room to go have breakfast. After all, she needs energy for her next big adventure. Hope you enjoyed that, and we'll see you again soon for another story from the Mennonite Heritage Village. Thanks. Have a good day. Hey guys, welcome back to Craft Time. Today, I am going to be showing you how to make tulips from plastic forks. So what you're going to need is some colorful paint, some white paper, and some plastic forks. So what you're going to do is you're going to grab the paper, just like that. Oh, and also, don't forget a paintbrush. So you're going to take your paintbrush with some green paint and paint the stems with leaves coming out of it just like so. And it doesn't have to be perfect because guess what? Flowers are not perfect and yet they are beautiful in their own way. Just like that. And then you're gonna take your fork you're gonna take the back side of the fork and dip it in the paint. So it's nice and well coated, just like that. And then you're gonna take it upside down and press it onto the paper. So that it looks, it resembles a tulip. And this is the fun part, you can, do all different types of colors. You can do different color combinations. You can do orange and purple, red and yellow, yellow and orange, green, blue and purple, any colors that you would like. You can just have fun with it. And you can go outside and see if there's any tulips popping up on your yard. So it looks just like that. Have fun! Here's another story about a flower from our lovely book, Grandma's Garden by Marilyn Dewick. Enjoy. The Nasturtium. Greta, Mama called from the kitchen, please go to the garden and gather some nasturtiums for me. Greta hurried to the garden. Adding nasturtium petals to a salad or to a fancy dessert always meant there was a celebration. Here are some beautiful ones, Mama. Is it enough? Thank you, Greta. It will be just right to decorate this special cake. Your cousins are coming with their parents tonight to help us celebrate Grandpa's birthday. Nasturtiums are one of the edible flowers used in decorating foods. Mennonite women used flowers to beautify their yards, their home decor, and tasty food. It was a way of recognizing the beauty of God's creation. Women found ways to beautify their homes that were acceptable to the church. It also was considered a civic duty to beautify their yards and homes. In this way, they brought a sense of civilization to the wild prairies. Did you guys enjoy the story in the craft? I sure did. And if you guess that this windmill was used for pumping water, you were wrong. It was actually used for grinding grain for flour. How amazing is that? 
So make sure you hit, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe and share it with all of your friends. And make sure you have the bell on too so you get notified every single time we upload a video. See you next week.